welcome to Luther Belden Farm in Hatfield, Massachusetts. We're the Williams family and we've been here since 1661. So we've been a dairy farm since 1964. Um, I'm here with my family, which will in introduce themselves. Um, I'm Lucinda Williams. I'm Jackson. Joe. And this is and this is our son Remy and Ruth. So we're glad to be participating in the Adopt a Cow program. So our youngest cows, our youngest calves, we raise all of our own replacements. So we raise them from when they're babies. And as you'll see, each one has their own house and they have their own yard. And they have neighbors that they can see and enjoy and they have their own food and they love to um, suck on things and so they can um, have their bottle fed at the beginning and uh, then they learn to drink from a bucket and um, you know sometimes people worry about you know their care and and we tell them just like in preschool if they were all in one big pen we would worry about some of them not getting enough food or about a, a, the bigger one might take some of their drink more of their milk and so this way everyone gets the right amount of food and water for them and they uh, are happy being with their neighbors and they've got plenty of room to bounce around and they are kept safe um, some many people have um, dogs that they keep in their in their pens in their crates and we have pens to keep our animals so since this is school we're just going to ask a couple questions and answers now some people think that she might be biting me it is not true let's see if we can see in here we'll be a dentist she has no teeth on the top she just has a hard palate there she does have teeth on the bottom can you see her teeth there teeth on the bottom, no teeth on the top. So when she's doing this, she's sucking on my hand, but it doesn't hurt at all. Her tongue is covering her bottom teeth and again, no teeth on the top. So it doesn't hurt at all. She's a very sweet thing. She likes to have head scratches. So when the calf gets to be about two months old, uh, she gets moved to uh, to the group pens and this is where they um they have a lot of changes going on they have a, a diet change where they're introduced to some long hay and the rumens start to get uh their stomachs uh start to develop start to to develop more um they learn social interaction uh they, they learn how to be around um, each other. It's kind of like like going to kindergarten. They learn um, all, all the social skills that, that they're going to need for, for, for the rest of their life. So this is our breeding age heifers. After they move from the super hutch, which you just saw, at about a year, they get moved to this pen. And as you can see and hear in this pen, we've got fans going to keep them cool and keep them happy. They've got stalls with sawdust in them to, that they can lie down on. And they'll stay here until they're about two months or three months from calving. And then we move them into the dry cow barn. Our cows and all cows are very curious. They love to know what's going on. They're looking at the camera. They're obviously licking my arm. Uh, we try to give them as much human interaction as possible so they're used to us being in the pens and being with them constantly. Now, uh, one of the fun facts for all you to think about is, or the question is, which female cows can actually give milk? And can these cows give milk? And the answer to that would be, no, they can't, not yet. They first have to get pregnant, have a baby calf. Once they've had the baby calf, they then will be uh, milk producers. So these are our, our dry cows. Uh, the, 
is cows get a pretty good deal. They get two straight months of vacation every year. And uh, I would like a couple months of vacation. <laughs> um, and so they, uh, so, so they go to a different barn. They get fed a, a different diet. Um, and it's really their time to relax and, 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 and recharge and to grow um, the, the, the calf um, and, to, and to really focus all, the, all their energies. On. And so this cow is, 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 is Licky and uh, she's so aptly named I because she loves to lick and she's very friendly. Yeah. Okay, sure. Now here we are in our main milking barn. So you'll see all these girls here. They are happy and they're eating. So we love to see when our girls are eating. So most of what they eat, we have grown right here on the farm. So right behind you, which you can't see, um, is a big cornfield. So, so we grow the majority of what they eat. So we grow um, hay and alfalfa and corn. And then we add some other foods, some supplements to it, some extra vitamins that they might need. So here they are. They sleep in on waterbeds that are covered with sawdust. So they are very comfy. In the summer, the waterbeds are nice and cool. It keeps them cool and they love it. And in the winter, they don't freeze, which is so interesting. They also have access, cows drink a lot of water. So they always have access to water and they're here eating their food. They have a special needs area. Someone's got a hurt foot or if she is feeling a little bit off, then we put her in a special needs area so she can get extra attention. We can make sure to give her everything that she needs. Um, also, you will see that we have some massage, some cow brushes to give them a massage over there. And we have giant fans. It's really important for cows to keep cool in the summer. They love things, they love their temperature, ideal temperature for calves, for cows. Well, this is a good question for you. Since this is a school project, what do you think the ideal temperature for cows could be? Well, for me, my ideal temperature is about 72 degrees. Summer or winter, I would like it to be 72. It's not the reality, but that's what I'd like for cows. Their ideal temperature is about 50 degrees. It's a lot colder than for us. So it's important for them to keep cool in the summer. I want to talk about, we're a robot barn. So our cows, unlike other, other herds that they all get milked at the same time, our cows get milked in a 24 hour period. So as you can see by the video, our cows are eating right now, or some of them are eating. Once they're done eating, they go to their stalls where we have water beds with sawdust on top that they will lay down in. And then when they're ready to eat again or to be melt, they will go over to the robot, which will sort them into the robot, melt them, and then they'll come back here for more feed. So we have three milking robots and each robot milks about 60 cows each. That means in total, we milk 180 cows. Now, these robots work all day long, every day. They milk 24 seven. And as you can see, they milk the cows all on their own. So these robots are great. And the cows love them because they walk into them on their own. They get some yummy grain as a snack while they're getting milk. And then this robotic arm here has a little laser on it that sees where the cow's teats are and then it can put each cup on the teat all on its own and so when we milk the the cows there's three steps to it so first the robot washes each teat and then it puts on each teat cup and you can see here this is the milk that's coming out of the cow so it's tracking it the whole time we can see how much milk each cow makes. And once the cow's done being milked, the last step is that it sprays the cow with some iodine 
to help make sure it stays nice and clean after milking. And then the front door opens and the cow steps out and another cow can come in. So another thing that I think is always fun to think about is how we care about the nutritional needs of our animals, just as it's important for us to get the right nutrition in our bodies, it's important for our animals to do the same. So when they are in here, in the, in the milking robot, they get a particular amount of a protein pellet that comes down automatically. Now these robots know exactly who it is who has come in for her time milking. And it will be able to feed her, the computer generates just the right amount of feed for her where she is in her milking cycle and what her nutritional needs are. Now, my nutritional needs might not be the same as your nutritional needs because we're different sizes and different ages. So the same is true with our animals. So this is our milk tank. We've got a 4,000 gallon milk tank that keeps our milk cool. So milk coming out of the cows is somewhere around 98 degrees. It's pretty warm. And as it comes out of the cow and goes into the tank. We actually put it through this pre-cooler, which cools the milk down. We run water one way and melt the other, and that cools the milk down to about 70 degrees. The warm water is used to feed the cows because they love warm water, especially in the winter. Then the milk itself goes into the tank where if you pan to the to the display, you'll see it's at 38 degrees Fahrenheit, right where it's supposed to be. Um, our milk is picked up every other day. Um, so today is a milk truck day. So pretty soon the milk truck will be showing up. So, so our milk, as I said, is picked up every other day. And from there, it goes to one of our plants and it's processed homogenized, pasteurized, and made into the next product. And if it's milk in the store, it's going to be at your doorstep within three to four days. So milk made here in, is very fresh to all the consumers. The other thing I'd like to point out is the importance that we put on quality of milk. We make sure that our, that's why we want our cows healthy and happy. It helps keeps them healthy, keeps the milk healthy. We monitor that. Behind us is our methane digester and it goes 16 feet into the ground. So it doesn't look like much, but there's a lot happening back there. We use the poop from cows to generate electricity. And so the lights that you use, as dairy farmers, we care a lot about the health of the earth and taking care of it. And so this digester is one way that we sustainably run our farm and help protect the earth and the land.